Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. In this video today, we're doing something a little bit different. We're making thumb suckers. That's right, we're gonna show you how to take a mold of your thumb and then cast it in hard candy so you can literally have a sucker of your thumb. Now, Nate has worked hard prototyping this project for us today, so why don't you go ahead, Nate, and show us how to get started. There's a lot of good candy recipes out there. We're gonna show you one of the easiest ones and also how to build it up to turn it into something spectacular and personal. Not only do you get to make some delicious candy for this project, but it's also a great way to practice the basics of molding and casting. Since we are gonna be molding and casting, one of the main supplies you're going to need is a two-part mold putty. I have a couple different brands of mold putty that I was able to buy at a local craft store. Both are easy to use, relatively inexpensive, and are food safe. Some of the other materials we're going to need are corn syrup, white sugar, a flavoring of your choice, and food dye. Some other supplies you're gonna need are disposable plastic cups, clothespins, lollipop sticks, measuring cups, a high heat spatula, and a candy thermometer. And of course, a pot to cook in. You want to make sure that it's large enough that you can hold all of your ingredients easily, but small enough that your candy thermometer will still reach what's cooking near the bottom. Now, since I'm gonna be molding my thumb for this one, I'm gonna to have to lose the glove. Most disposable cups are large enough that if you were to fill them with silicone, you would waste some valuable putty. We're going to cut this cup down to size to make it fit our thumb perfectly. To measure where you should cut the cup, line your thumb up with it, leaving about half an inch from the bottom. For my thumb, this line perfectly marks where we want to trim the cup. The next important step is to make sure you've trimmed the nail and wash your thumb thoroughly. The silicone putty will pick up every tiny detail of your thumb, including dirt, and you don't want that ending up in your candy. Now it's time to get started molding our thumb. Grab a small handful of each color of putty so that the two together have about the same volume as your trimmed down cup. If it seems like you have more of one color putty than the other, just add a little bit more until they seem even. Now we're going to mix these two together until we have one smooth color. We should get a lighter purple. Try to knead the putty quickly because you have a limited work time, usually only a couple minutes. Once you're finished mixing, you should have one smooth, consistent color with no streaks in it. This stuff feels kind of like a stiff Play-Doh or maybe silly putty. Press a little bit of silicone down into the bottom of the cup and then begin wrapping your thumb in the rest of the putty. Press your thumb with the putty around it down into the cup and begin smooshing down all of the sides all the way around. You want to press hard enough to remove most of the air bubbles and to be sure that the putty is forming a good seal around your thumb. This ensures that your mold will pick up every detail of your thumb, down to the fingerprints. The putty takes two or three minutes before it begins to stiffen, so try and get your thumb molded before then. Once it's begun hardening, it's a little bit less flexible and a little bit more durable. It will take about 15 minutes for this silicone to cure completely, so just be patient. Update on where we are now, we've made two molds, one of my thumb and one of Grant's. It's time to start making candy. The basic recipe for this candy is super simple. It's two cups of white sugar, two thirds cups light corn syrup, and three quarter cups water. Add all of those ingredients to your saucepan and set the stove to medium heat. Using your heat resistant spatula, mix all of those ingredients until the sugar is dissolved. Once the sugar is dissolved, it's actually time to stop stirring. At this point, mixing too much could actually ruin your candy and the bubbling action from the sugar will circulate it within the pan. As your mixture is boiling out the excess water, the candy thermometer will probably stay around 200 degrees Fahrenheit for a while. You need to be sure that the head of your candy thermometer is submerged in your mixture, but not touching the side or bottom of your pan, as this could throw off the temperature measurement. While your candy mixture is heating up, it's time to choose what flavor and color you want your thumb sucker to be. Since I'm going with the orange cream flavor, I'm going to try and use the red and yellow food coloring to get an orange thumb sucker. Now you want a lollipop stick and a clothespin so that when our candy is done cooking, we'll be all ready to make our thumb sucker. It's a simple thing to position your lollipop stick where you're gonna want it and hold it in place with your clothespin. Keep a close eye on your candy thermometer. When it hits 260 degrees Fahrenheit, it's time to add your color. Even after adding the food coloring, you don't want to stir the mixture. Let the bubbling action mix the color in for you. As the temperature keeps rising, watch it very carefully. You'll need to remove it from the heat the instant it hits 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Any longer and the sugar will start to burn. Let the candy mix cool down just enough to stop bubbling and then add your flavoring. Be careful as the steam from the rapidly heating flavor extract could cause small splashes of molten sugar. All right guys, our mixture is hot just off the stove. I've added the flavoring. It's time to pour it into our mold. Now 
Of course, if you want to speed up the cooling process, you can pop the whole mold into the refrigerator for a few minutes. For easy cleanup, fill your pot with hot water and boil it on the stove. The heat will help melt and dissolve the sugar so it comes off quickly and easily. If you have a certain color you want to achieve, you can practice with about two cups of water in a glass. This way you can figure out exactly how many drops of each color food coloring you need without ruining a whole batch of candy. Grant wanted his thumb to be root beer flavored, so we're going for a nice brown color. All right guys, update, we finished our candy, poured them into our thumb molds, and they've cooled down to the point where they're ready to be pulled out. If you were having a hard time pulling your thumb out when you were making the mold, it's possible you're going to need to cut the side of the silicone to get the lollipop to come out smoothly. Oh my gosh, it's my thumb. What the heck? It's so weird. There you have it guys, there's a cast of my thumb in candy. You can see these imperfections in the cast. That's from where I wasn't careful enough wrapping the silicone around my thumb. So make sure you do a very good, thorough job of getting it to cover all the details. Something else that's really interesting about this silicone mold putty is look how much detail it picks up. You can actually see some of my thumbprint in the lollipop. I guess there's really one test that matters the most and that's how does it taste. I used orange cream flavor. That's got a great orange flavor to it. It's nice and sweet. And the shape is great. It fits right in your mouth. It's a little strange feeling the thumbprint on my tongue as well. After pouring the thumbs, we still had a little bit of leftover candy mixture. So we tried pouring some candy Lego blocks and minifigures. <laughs> okay, so the candy stayed stuck to the plastic Lego sheet and completely released from the silicone mold. I didn't see that coming, but I hope it means that we've got good indentations on the back of these pieces. That's looking decent. I don't think this is enough that we can pick up quite enough detail to really get the pieces to lock together. The syrup, when it comes right out of the pot, is still fairly thick and it has a hard time getting into all the tiny little nooks and crannies that you need to really get a functional Lego piece. Han Solo in Candyite. All right, there you have it, guys. That's how to take just a few simple ingredients and make your own candy. And you've learned how to mold and cast your own thumb so that you can make a customized thumb sucker lollipop. Using these same techniques, you can mold all sorts of things. You can see our Lego and jewels that we made out of candy. Now, if you liked this video, you know what to do. Thanks for joining me for this project. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. It's weirder if you're eating someone else's. Mark tried my thumb, isn't oh, it? Isn't that, isn't that weird? Yellow, hello yellow. Oh, these do not protect from heat enough. My hands hurt a lot. In fact, that might be the thumbnail. Hey guys, just want to pop in with a quick announcement. This week, I'm hitting a huge milestone with my wife. It is our 10 year anniversary. We're heading out to the island of Kauai for two weeks with no kids, just us. So the plan for the video is guys, I've asked Nate to step in and take over the next six videos for you. It's just gonna be his lovely face. So treat him well, <laughs> leave him a good comment, and I'll be looking for you when I get back. Talk to you then.